Good morning, folks. Today we're discussing weather, a cold blast, and a storm. Then we're off to solar flare prediction, solar forcing of precipitation, and evidence of a major solar blast in the past. But we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find it was another calm day. But potential is building. Still haven't had much in the way of solar flares or eruptive activity. Coronal hole stream is drawn out and only of modest speed. We have been in a quiet period on the sun for several days, and that even includes the plasma filaments. Several small ropes on the disk have found considerable stability and are firmly locked in their coronal homes for the moment. But what has our attention this morning is a significantly developing sunspot situation. The northern incoming sunspots do have a bit more breadth than expected and are in development. The southern incoming spot is developing rather quickly and a new and fast spreading spot just emerged past central longitudes. This means flares could be about to return. Off next to weather where a major cold front is sliding towards the United States. Over the next week, the cold spell driven by a polar vortex split forcing polar Arctic air to mid-latitudes is going to break cold records across the country eyes open, folks. Also here is the full run of Dekelity, the cyclone that hit Madagascar and then slid between it and Africa. It is heading into southern waters now. First article today hits an interesting pre-flare pattern. Scientists have noticed a thermal runaway event that occurs before big solar flares by a few hours. They're hopeful they can write a code to auto-detect those signals since we already have the satellites and data capability to observe them. Up next, excellent study on the solar forcing of precipitation. This one looks back through the records found in the Peruvian Andes geology and shows how the 11-year and longer grand solar cycles dramatically affect position and amount of rain. Lastly, folks, we find an outstanding paper on an asteroid sample from Itokawa. This is the one they sampled in near-Earth space and brought back to Earth about 15 years ago. New analysis has found that the sample has actually undergone extreme irradiation by a titanic solar blast. They said it was 40 times stronger than the 2003 Halloween blast, which puts it directly into the X-1000 to Micronova range. It's impossible to tell if it was the super flare or accretion release, but one of the major 6,000 or 12,000 year blasts of the sun, the biggest ones, directly irradiated the sample they brought back from Itakawa. Folks, later today, the first 2025 issue of the Observer Review will be coming out. It's the best way to keep up with the most important science, the only publication focused on the coming magnetic pole shift and Earth disaster cycle. Sign up at the link below. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.